Hi there, my name's Adam Fielding, and today I'm going to be showing you how exactly I put together one of the patches from my uh, serum injection project released through Fielding Soundworks. So um, for the uninitiated, serum injection is uh, it's a sound bank for the serum wavetable synth containing 150 patches focusing on a variety of cinematic and electronic sounds. So the patch I'll be looking at today is called 2048, or as I like to call it, the Instant Blade Runner Ambience Patch. Um, you can actually download this patch and nine others for free from the Fielding Soundworks site as part of a demo selection of patches. So there's no purchase or sign up required if you just want to have a look at the patch. So let's just have a quick listen to it. So it's, it's quite an interesting ambient atmospheric patch that would sit equally well in a mix as a pad or as an atmospheric bed. Um, I should probably point out that in the Serum Injection Sound Bank, I've split the more soundscapey patches into two categories. So you've got the more musical ambient patches like this one, which I've labeled as AMB, um, and the kind of crazy, more, more sort of esoteric soundscapes, which are labeled as soundscapes or SC here. Um, so they're perfect for adding a, a nice bit of polished cinematic flair. Um, so anyway, this patch is pretty much split into three components. We've got the first oscillator here, um, which is quite erratic and includes a lot of motion. So let's just have a, have a quick listen to that. Um, then we've got the second oscillator, oscillator B, uh, which is a more melodic drone. And then we've got the noise oscillator, which kind of supports everything. So you can kind of hear how that's put together, squall together again. Right, so the first thing that I should probably point out is that this patch, along with every other patch in Serum Injection, makes use of a set of custom wavetables. Um, I've really wanted to create a sound bank with a unique flavour, and I felt like leveraging Serum's custom wavetable editing functionality uh, seemed like a pretty good way to do that. Um, so if we just mute oscillator B and the noise oscillator. In oscillator A, we have a sort of busy, rapidly modulating wavetable that cycles through at a reasonable pace. Um, so let's just have a look at the wavetable editor. So you'll notice in the actual wavetable display that the individual cycles are labeled in intervals. So it goes from one to four to eight to 11, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, This is because the initial wavetable, which was sourced from another synth recording, was it was a bit too complex when I initially imported it. Um, so I used the import section here, and I've, I honestly can't remember what I used for this particular wavetable. But um, when it was actually imported into Serum, it was just a bit too complex initially. So what I did, and what I'll do now to highlight this process, was to simply remove a selection of the wavetable cycles. Uh, so if we go to the add remove section here, uh, here I will reduce it to a quarter of the wavetable. So if I click on here, that's removed three quarters of the existing cycles that I had originally. So now it goes from one to 14 to 28. Um, now, so if I just play that, So you can already hear, actually I'll just turn the, the reverb down a little bit. Or not, uh, if I just turn it off, there we go. Um, so you can already hear that it's kind of smoothed out the complexity of the already processed wavetable. Um, I've also used Serum's spectral morphing functionality to fill in the gaps between each individual cycle, which really helps to smooth things out nicely. So what I would have done had it not already been applied would go to morph, 
Um, and in this instance, I would have used more spectral with zero fundamental phase. Um, so if we just undo my wave, my uh, wave total reduction, just undo that change and play it again. So it's much more complex again if we redo the changes. So that's a very common process that I use throughout a lot of patches just to kind of smooth out the wave tables, um, not have any sort of cycles really sticking out. Um, so uh, I'll just stick the reverb back on. Um, so you can already hear it's, it, it's kind of smoothed out the complexity of that process wavetable. So if now if we just head to the global section, you can see that I've specified a range of 24 semitones for the unison on oscillator A and a range of seven semitones on oscillator B. So what that means is that we get some nice spread octaves on oscillator A and a nice perfect fifth on oscillator B when the unison detune is set to max. Um, now I could have also used the stack function at the bottom of this section uh, to stack additional octaves on top. Um, but I quite liked where the sound was in this instance, so I have actually left it off, but I have used that quite a lot on some of the other patches. Um, I've also adjusted the width, warp, and wavetable position uh, values on the unison section, just to kind of give the patch a bit more width overall, so it's some slight variation per voice. So let's head back to the oscillator display and have a look at oscillator B now. Uh, so you can hear, um, well, you can't hear anything yet, let's play it. So it's a much more straightforward kind of droning sound. So this wavetable is comprised of fewer varied cycles than oscillator A, um, providing kind of a more steady, slightly modulating effect when we sweep through it. Um, now you've probably noticed um, that I'm modulating a lot of individual components on each oscillator, even in this instance where it's quite a simple sound. Um, it's not particularly complex. I'm modulating the pitch for kind of a pitch drifts type sound. Um, the wavetable position is being modulated. Uh, the wavetable modifier is being modulated. The panning and levels are being modulated. So there's plenty of motion. I kind of feel like that sort of detail is what separates a really good patch from kind of a more vanilla sound. In this instance, it makes a lot of sense because I want the elements to shift in and out. It's a kind of, it's an ambient type of patch. Um, so I'm using a lot of variable LFOs to control these values. Um, and it kind of gives a nice, a nice sense of motion. But even in, in simpler patches though, uh, I find that it brings much more life to a patch to have an array of slightly modulated variables. The Serum's modulation is, is fantastic for this. To highlight this, I mean, let's, uh, let's have a look at the modulation matrix. Uh, now one really cool thing about Serum is that if you're making a patch, you might not even need to look at the modulation matrix section. I know it might seem kind of daunting for a lot of people, um, but modulating a variable is as simple as right-clicking a control and selecting a modulation source in Serum. So really straightforward stuff. Um, but the modulation matrix allows you to assign auxiliary sources, which are fantastic for macro controls. So you can scale the modulation amount via another variable. Um, so you can see here, there's, there's a fair amount of modulation going on, which makes sense. Um, it's an ambient patch on it, plenty of movement. So with this type of ambient and atmospheric patch, I tend to use a series of slower, simple LFO curves running at different speeds to modulate the individual elements at a different rate. Um, so this gives the patch a kind of shifting feel where it takes a long time for each individual component to line back up to the starting value. So it gives it a nice sense of progression throughout the course of the patch's played note. So looking again at the oscillator, at the oscillator section, um, you can see that the, uh, the level of each oscillator is controlled, but it was modulated at a different rate. Um, I mean, here it's modulated by the velocity here, oscillator B is modulated by LFO1, and, and so on. Um, so that makes sense. So you have different oscillators fading in and out over time or just playing at a static level. Combined with the modulation of the other parameters, it gives a really nice feeling of movement and progression. Now, the final section, the oscillator section here, is the noise oscillator. So if you just have a look at this, it's quite simple. I've, uh, I've set it to one of Serum's included noise sources and I've set the note to pitch button on. So what this means is that the noise doesn't just play a static pitch, 
it'll, it's, it's tracked depending on the note that you're playing. Um, so combined with the tuning of the pitch encoder, which I've set to 24% here, um, it results in an extra pitched oscillator to play with, which kind of rounds out the sound of the patch quite nicely. So on its own, it sounds like this. So it just adds kind of a nice breathy kind of feel to the patch without overcomplicating things. Um, so something that I've, I feel like I should point out at this point, which I was probably, I probably should have touched on this earlier when I was messing around with the reverb actually, is that I'm, I'm generally quite adamant about not relying too heavily on effects in the serum injection bank. I mean, if we take the effects mix off here, I've set it to macro four, so I'll just turn that down um, and we just play some notes. You can hear it's it's still quite a nice patch with plenty going on. Um, so I, I don't like penalizing people for removing effects from a patch just to help it sit in a mix. So starting with a complex usable patch before applying effects is generally the way I work. Um, I'm not saying that every patch has to be super complex. I'm just saying, you know, it's nice to have a bit of a bit of movement just to kind of humanize a patch, give it a bit of an organic feel. So if we take a look at the effects section, yeah, there's quite a bit going on. <laughs> um, although I'm using a filter in the oscillator section here, um, the way this works, it's it's only applied to oscillator A and the noise oscillator in this instance. Um, this is because I'm using the filter's drive to beef up oscillator A a little, and I didn't really want to roll the top of oscillator B off quite as much. So heading back to the effects section and having a look at the filter here, we can see that there is an LFO controlling the cutoff frequency of the master filter. So one thing to point out here is that the filter in the oscillator section works per voice, whereas this master filter does not. Um, this makes filter one much more suited to using envelopes, whereas LFOs work nicely as a modulation source of filter two, um, provided you don't set the LFO to re-trigger on each note on. So again, I've set the drive up a little to beef up the sound a bit. And I've also selected a six pole low pass filter so we don't lose the entire top end of the patch. But it should smooth things out nicely. And the extra modulation gives a nice extra sense of movement. You might be sensing a theme here. Um, now we have the compressor and the chorus. Um, pretty self-explanatory here. The compressor is used to smooth out any amplitude peaks and the chorus is used to round out the sound a bit. Um, so just listening to it with those on and off. So again, it's not overcomplicating things, but it is kind of adding a nice extra kind of rounded feel to the patch. Um, and the compressor helps to prevent any kind of errant spikes or anything like that occurring in, in a mix. Um, now, one trick I do tend to use, and I've well used on a lot of patches, but I haven't used here, is to actually use filter two or the effects filter to roll off the lows. So say you're making a lead or a key patch, um, to help it sit better in a mix, you really don't want it swamping the entire low end section of the mix, um, especially nothing going on in the LFE. So even if I were to set this to a high pass 24 pole, pole filter, um, uh, you could just use the cutoff frequency to completely scoop out the lows um, and just help it sit better in a mix. So I'm just gonna set that back for now. But I haven't done that here, um, but here I've just used the EQ to scoop the lows and make the patch a bit more mix friendly. So. Uh, going down to the EQ, you can see that I've just scooped the lows there and boosted the highs a bit. And you can actually control the low cut in this patch using macro control too. So there we go. Um, so going back to the oscillator section, because that's where all the fun stuff is happening. If we take a look at each LFO, um, you can see that the shapes are pretty straightforward. It's an ambient patch. It doesn't really require a lot of crazy LFO curves. There are some patches in Serum Injection that make heavy use of these curves to play sequence parts, but this isn't one of those patches. So looking at the macro section, you can see that everything is mapped. Um, I've tended to map the effects section to macro four, so you can easily disable the reverb and delay quickly and easily if you just want the dry sound. Uh, auto pan controls are included, so you can control how much the pan pots on each oscillator are modulated by an LFO. Um, the low cut macro, as I explained before, controls the aforementioned EQ section, 
and the motion macro is used to scale the modulation of a couple of parameters. So let's try that out. So you can hear with the motion macro turned right down, you end up with a much more static kind of sound. Um, this means that you can use it kind of as more of a, a simple pad type sound rather than a sort of big complex ambient patch. Um, so you can transform what is initially a complex ambient patch to something more static and manageable in a mix. Uh, so we've covered the wavetables, we've covered the modulation, we've covered the overall structure of the patch. Uh, we've covered the effects and the macro section. So I guess we now have a good sense of how this patch was conceived and put together. One extra thing I'd, I'd like to point out is that this patch, along with all others in Serum Injection, do include velocity and modulation wheel uh, mappings. Um, in this instance, the mod wheel controls the filters and the velocity controls the oscillator amplitude and filter cutoffs. And those are set in the modulation matrix section here. Um, so, I guess there we have it. Uh, this is one of the 150 patches contained within Serum Injection. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, and I look forward to sharing more detailed patch breakdowns with you in the future. Cheers. <laughs>